Okay, we're back here at HP Discover. We are in Las Vegas for HP Discover 2013. This is siliconangle.com and wikibon.org. It's theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, I'm with Dave Vellante from Wikibon. A very special CUBE guest here, uh, George Kadifa, Executive Vice President, I guess your EVP on the Executive Council. What is your official title that's on the, the, the bio? On the business yeah, card? On the, uh, the EVP. Yeah, Executive Vice President, President HP Software. On the Executive Council. Yes. Um, well, you're the GM, GM of HP Software too, is that yes, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. And the GM of yeah. HP it's Software. It just didn't fit on the card. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you. Um, we always love to get the, the leaders of the, of, the, of the business in the queue just to talk about you know, casual business. So uh, the news you announced today was Haven, which yes. is big data. You have big data. Yeah. You have IT uh, management software. IT is SaaS. Right. And mobility, and this is all under your group. Right. Um, what were you guys announcing today at the show, and then we can jump into it? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we announced uh, Haven, which stands for uh, our number one big data platform in the industry. That is, we have more than a billion dollars worth of software alone uh, around, around that big data platform, which puts us in the leadership position in that market that is becoming a very critical market in our industry. So we have integrated our uh, capabilities within uh, Atami and Vertica and ArcSight and added to it the support for Hadoop. And we have a, a, a very, you know, a, a, a leading position in, in that space. And we're also launching new types of applications. The N in Haven stands for N apps, which is a new style of IT applications where you take advantage not just of kind of traditional relational technology, but more importantly, you take advantage of columnar technology, you take advantage of log management technology, you take advantage of idle, which is human information, and suddenly you're changing the way applications are written. And we do intend to change the way applications are written. So N, again, stands for? I, N apps. N number of apps. N number of apps, right? right. Like a variable of right. infinite like apps. Tons right? of apps. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, hopefully. Lots yes. and lots of apps. <laughs> yes. Okay, got yes. it. Good. So, so let's talk about the business. Obviously, the business has changed. HP software. We've always been banging on the software drum, and we, HP's never really been a really software company in the past. Their DNA's mostly been hardware, but a lot of firmware, a lot of software goes in the hardware. Yeah. But yeah. now, with the renewed focus, big data puts software in the center stage. Software-led infrastructure, yes. software-defined networking. Yeah. You now have that other part of the business that's integrating in. We just had Bethany Mayer on talking about fabrics, right? So yeah. this yeah. new style of IT would be yeah. based on fabrics. So you got cloud, that's holistic, and then networking underneath, yeah. and everything in between is the exactly. software. Right. Um, how do you evolve in the strategy of HP? What is the core strategy for HP software? Share with the folks your vision for the software, because now you have to traverse both classical software, developer right. environment, DevOps, and the yep. cloud, to <laughs> integrating into the fabrics. Right. Yeah, yeah, it is a great question, uh, John. And, and really, the mission of HP Software is to enable the new style of IT. And the new style of IT, if you think about it, this is the first time in my career over the last 33 years where there's a massive technology shift, not caused by one technology, but by three. I'm calling it the triple storm, which is you've got mobility, cloud, and big data hitting the IT organization and the IT landscape simultaneously, and then wrapped around it is the whole concept of security and the concerns about security, because the three hits are creating massive complexities and needs for a security framework that makes things work right. So what we've done at HP Software is defined our mission to basically drive or enable this next, this, this new style of IT based on cloud mobility, security, and big data. And what you see us in each one of our uh, offerings is stressing those elements. So we're taking our IT management suite, uh, which basically covered kind of the web apps domain and moving it to mobile applications. And how do we develop mobile applications? How do we distribute mobile applications? How do we test them? And how do we monitor them and manage them? So that's why we announced HP Anywhere, which is basically this new uh, class of applications. Similarly for big data, we've taken all our engines and now we have, you know, we have connectors, we have the engines, and now we have the N apps, the applications on top of it to yeah. enable that ecosystem. You know, similarly for, uh, uh, for cloud, you know, we have you know, our cloud service automation software and all the software and orchestration around it 
to enable basically cloud systems. Well, I was really excited to meet with you on Sunday and just randomly at the, my son's graduation event that you were there and, and socializing. But more importantly, when I looked at your bio, you worked at Silver Lake, so obviously they have a history of doing private equity and doing all kinds of, you know, going private. You've also been an entrepreneur and you're at the big company at HP. And so I always get a chuckle when people say, well, HP is really not a software company. But well, who is a software? Is Microsoft a software company? Well, that, that's kind of going to the cloud now. So right. software's being redefined, right? Correct. You're seeing it across the board. You just right. talked about at the edge of the network, BYOD, right. you can put software there. Yep. And you can go into the network fabric. Right. What, how has software changed fundamentally now to capture those opportunities that you're going after? What, yeah. is, what is the difference in the old way? I don't, I don't pick on Microsoft, but you know, box software, shrink wrap software, download it, right. install it to... Thing. Yeah, well, uh, two dimensions. The first one is, we're, we're got, you know, the days of shrink wrap software, you know, these days are gone. Yeah. Uh, these are, this is old. This is kind of classic. Uh, and uh, and really what's ha what's starting instead is, one is software is being embedded in everything. You know, if you look at the car today, there are 10 million lines of code in the car today. You know, now we're having issues about security. People are worried that, you know, if a car is connected through a GPS situation network or through a cellular network that someone can actually uh, log in and hack in into a car and drive it for you. It is so you know so everything you know every you know even uh, consumer goods, uh, even you know uh, areas where you know you never imagined there will be software in it. Everything is becoming so software is becoming embedded is the first one in every piece of equipment you have there, not just computers. And every piece of equipment is becoming a computer. And the second piece is uh, software has changed uh, form. You know, it used to be shipped as a, as a box. Now you can access it as a service anywhere. And you can access it as a small app on your, on your, on your smartphone all the way to going on a website and basically downloading it or literally using it on a subscription basis or on a one-off basis. So it's becoming amorphous. Yeah. And you got open source, you had open source on top yeah. of that. Look yeah. what OpenStack has done in the past year. Right. Just alone has disrupted and, and you know impacted HP. Exactly, right. Um, Actually, open source. source to us is a huge opportunity, a positive opportunity for us. Uh, we've always been at HP committed to open standards and committed to heterogeneity and to ensure that our customers, our customers are worried about vendor lock-in, about yep. making a decision and send, suddenly that decision is a closed architecture decision and then the vendor comes back and asks for more money. HP is different. HP is committed to open, open centers, you know, open source if it's part of it. Yep. And really what open source is all about is about freedom. Giving people the freedom to take code and to basically deal yep. with it and manage it in a way that is helpful for what they're yeah, trying Dave and to I get. were just talking about yeah. a, that open source is now the new standards bodies. In the old days, you know, right. IEEE or, or some standard bodies would say, oh, we're going to agree on a spec, right. and that was the checkoff, not yeah. anymore. Now yeah. it's the communities. You're totally right. Communities now make 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 standards. Yeah, yeah. And, your, and your point about freedom is right on. It's not just free of charge. It's Correct. free to do what you can do and be yeah. creative. Yeah, uh, free as freedom. Yeah, I want to yeah. unpack your, your software business a little bit. Yeah. Um, so it's roughly $4 billion, uh -huh. right? Um, and you got a killer uh, security yep. roadmap. I, mean, yep. I think you guys got one of the best security stories out there. Yep. You got an IT service management business that's transitioning to SaaS, if I'm yep. hearing you, you, yep. you correctly. And you got a couple of gems in Vertica and, and, and Autonomy. autonomy. Yeah. Um, so, like a lot of HP businesses, you got the old, which is declining, and the new that you got to throw gasoline in the fire and make it right. go faster, right? right? So, talk about that strategy. Right. Um, how fast you can affect that transition? How fast you can ignite that that growth? Right. Yeah, uh, great question, David. That is, uh, this is any business, any software business of the scale of HP software is going exactly through, through the same transition. Because basically the reason we got to $4 billion is we've been able to accumulate that revenue from the last several years and, and do it. And then now with these shifts, you know, you know, the pricing is changing, uh, the dynamics are changing, and the customer's demand on us are changing. And so literally we're going through a portfolio approach. And in a portfolio approach, what you do is you try to take the businesses that are growing and, and basically give them more fuel. Then you're taking to the businesses that are not growing, and you, the first question you ask is why aren't they growing? And what, you know, but, but our perspective, our strategy is not to say, okay, if it's not growing, then let's cut the oxygen. No, that's actually the wrong way to do it. Our strategy is very simple. If it's not growing, what kind of innovation can we do to make them grow again? 
Uh, and we demoed today, for example, two products in my keynote on stage, yeah, so. you know, where the first product was classic monitoring. The classic monitoring space, you know, is, is mature. Mm -hmm. So what we've done instead, we've innovated and created what we're calling operations analytics, where suddenly, you know, we were able actually, as, as Christophe in the demo showed, we were able to actually move move back in time. With machine yeah. data, with looking machine, back in time, right. Right, a little time machine. Exactly right. So red, 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 oh, it's green, what happened? Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, and then he goes, well, the guy called George K actually, who made the change on Friday night. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. always the case, the, the boss right. screws things up. Right? Exactly that's right. John, he does it all so, the time. So that's an instance <laughs> where we take, <laughs> that's an instance where we take, okay, if, if, if it's not growing, you know, it's not a question, well, let's not cash cow it. I think that's the wrong way to say it in technology or to work on it. Instead, let's apply innovation to kind of keep growing even the, the ad scale businesses. Yeah, okay, now the other question I have is follow-up. I asked Meg at the, the analyst meeting about acquisitions. She said, I'm not acquiring any companies until I pay down the debt. Right. And I talked to her you know, privately after, she said, I might do some tuck-ins, but really that's right. our priority. Right. And then I followed up, you know, asked you, I said, okay, George, you gotta, you got to do more than $4 billion, right? You want to really, this is right. a huge opportunity for HP, yeah. you know, $100 billion yeah. plus dollar company. So, how are you going to do that without being able to acquire? Now, once right. that debt's paid down, I think you know, you're going to be dangerous <laughs> on the acquisition <laughs> front, but you, know, you can't comment on that. But talk about, talk about you know, sort of between now about. and then, yeah. well, talk about generically sort of the M&A strategy, and you're, you're a little bit handcuffed right now because you Meg's saying priority is to pay down the debt, but I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit in terms of your growth strategy. Yeah, yeah. well, first, uh, if you look at our results in Q1 and Q2 and the cash flow we generated, uh, yeah. they were very, you know, very good quarters, and the organization as a whole has executed perfectly. In yeah, we're talking 5.5 billion through the first half Correct. of the year, right? right. Which is a right. substantial uh, percentage of the total that you've promised the street for the year. Exactly uh, right, and, and that gives us basically the freedom uh, to uh, to enable our business on the broader level, where the balance sheet is looking yeah. in a very good shape. De definitely getting much better. Right. However, you know, philosophically, I want to grow organically as much as possible. Yeah, you know, there are some tuck-ins occasionally we need to do here and there, but you know, I'm not looking to grow the business to go and do massive, you know, multi-billion-dollar acquisitions. You know, the markets are smart enough to realize where the value is created, and usually when you do these large acquisitions. Uh, you're paying full value, and and you know like you look at Salesforce. You know they just made an acquisition, a two and a half billion dollar acquisition with uh, exact, exact target, target. Yeah. and the stock price went down what seven percent that day. You know the market basically told them, you know that's not biting accretive. off more than they can chew. Yeah, right. That's not that creative. So we need to be very careful. My belief is if we get our current product lines to grow between five to fifteen percent, depending on the markets and the products, it would be great. It is. I want to grow at two to three times GDP. But, but now really I want to push on that a little bit because right. I want to take Vertica as an example. Yeah. Paid what three? I think three forty for Vertica. Is that uh, was less it? than that? A little bit. Okay, less. so let's say roughly three hundred million for Vertica. Right. You picked up an asset. Right. That's a Vertica. Deal. Three hundred million. Oh yeah. And yeah. that you uh, I keep saying throw gasoline in the fire. That is a diamond. Yeah. Right in there. The rough, yeah. So. Uh, to me, that's the kind of acquisition yeah. that makes a lot of sense. You right. Know, you're right, you don't want to spend right. multi-billions. You know, right, but uh, when we acquired Vertica, it's a game changer. Uh, when we acquired Vertica, their revenues were in the single digits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. but they yeah. were accruing right. so a big premium. Oh, yeah. You plug yeah. them you into You understood you're paying a big premium, but the right. value that you can create right. for shareholders long term yeah. with that acquisition is, is enormous. I agree. And that's agree. the type, now maybe right. that's what you're calling tuck-ins. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what we're calling tuck-ins, David. And frankly, if there's another Vertica, we'll do it today. You know, that's not, that's not the... Yeah, you know they're out there, I mean, it's software. That's a product strategy. I mean, that's, that's to me, that's more of, exactly. hey, that's a le that single digit yeah. revenue is irrelevant. It's a yeah. lever that But you we can don't want to buy revenue. I think that's the right, right. message. Right, right, makes sense, right. right. Yeah. Okay. right. So that's not the strategy to grow, is buy revenue. It's right. the product to buy. that you can then explode into the HP. Again, we haven't domain. fully articulated that strategy yeah, right. yet, but this mag is uh, clearly, you know, on the right here in terms of, let, let's get our balance sheet. Well, you get the order. security. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, security uh, is a big agenda. So you have a lot, I mean, that's, your strategy right now is <laughs> pretty full. Right. Plates full, you got security. That's a big yeah. one right there. Yeah. You got a good yeah. story there too. Yeah, uh, yeah we, we do. Art we has do. the best security rap I've heard. I yeah. would say, and I've, I've heard them all. Yeah, and yeah. his is the most articulate. And no, I think we've compelling. got ArcSight has been yeah. in the uh, Gartner Magic Quadrants ten years in a row. You know, on the leadership position, and you know, it's a growing business, and we want to even grow it more. Yeah. So let's talk about sassification of the, yeah. of the world. Obviously, yeah. that's a software model that's obviously everyone's going to. You got the war going on with infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. That's the cloud, the cloud right. game. And you guys have, we just talked to all your guys yeah. this morning on that. Um, 
now, but the software piece about the application developers. So yeah. the, you got Rails developers, you got Python developers, you got all kinds of different developers. Yeah. How do you see that market evolving? Because obviously SaaS is the platform that customers want sure. to yeah. roll out. The yeah. economics are great, deployment's yeah. great, agile. Yeah. And that's great, fits with mobile. Yeah. So how do you see that market evolving? From your standpoint, looking at the growth, you get the two to 3% growth of what GDP, that's great for the consistency, but you got to, if someone's open down the end zone, you can throw the ball down the field. It's going to come from maybe a market force. Where do you see that potential edge? The person gets open, runs in the end zone. Yeah. Is it going to be from the big data piece or any market well, force? Well, there are, you know, there's more than just one player. Uh, there's the first one is on the big data side. To give you an example, uh, you take relational technology in the early 90s. That when the relation technology became mainstream, it created $200 billion of revenue from companies like SAP, like Oracle, like PeopleSoft, like Siebel, like you know, PTC, like everyone in that. In that. Yeah. So all these guys kind of grew out of relational technology because we were able to put data on in rows and columns, literally, yeah. and manage that. It's a disruptive piece. enabler. Right, so now with big data, with, with Haven, think about Haven as kind of the new wave of, of, of information instead of relational technology. Relational technology captures about 10% of total technology, of the total information. With Haven, we capture 100%. So we have a 10x factor in information capture. Then the growth, relational technology information growth might be growing at maybe 5-10%. Right. Well, the growth of non-relational or non-structured data is growing at 10 times faster. So you go and you say, I have 10x in, in growth, 10x in size, that's 100, <coughs> 100 times uh, opportunity set we've just created with Haven. And now imagine the applications we can we're going to build around it. To me, that's 100 billion to more than 500 to a trillion dollars of opportunity. And actually, I'll share our create. forecast. We'll keep on forecast with you. We actually have a, a premise that it's, it's going to be self-fulfilling and that right. drive relational growth as well. Correct. Because you're going to be bringing, yes. you know, a, a, a unstructured and structured yeah. data, to get analytic data into your transaction yes. yeah. uh, database and driving yeah. new value. Yeah. So I mean, the, dart, the darts at the yeah. dartboard, I mean, are all in order of magnitude massive, right? I mean, it's, yes. like, it's like, don't even, it's like, okay, it's, it's some big number. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the TAM <laughs> is just enormous. Right. Yeah, the right. TAM is huge. Right, and we're creating it, yeah. you know? So I want to ask you more philosophical questions. So sit back, put your M&A hat on as you're in Silver Lake or your VC or your entrepreneur, opportunity recognition right. kind of mode. So we are living in an era, we've said on SiliconANGLE and Wikibon, in the modern era of business, first time ever, unprecedented opportunity for a business to fully instrument their operation, mm -hmm. end to end. Mm -hmm. With mobile, with connected instruments, you get big data, mm -hmm. a company now can reconstruct their value chains right. and measure everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I mean, every yeah. aspect of yeah. your business. Yeah. We're exactly. talking about NSA and surveillance. Yeah. I mean, companies can basically do that themselves. Yeah. How are you looking at that? Because that's a real conversation people are having. And it's kind of mind blowing for yeah. someone to saying, wow, I can measure hiring, firing, supply chain, manufacturing, customer yeah. support. Yeah. Every piece of data yeah. is available and capturable. Yeah. And measurable yeah. Yes. and real time. And storable. So yeah. that is just, Intoxicating, just to kind of think about. Right, right. How do you how do you how do you straighten that out, and how do you talk about yeah, that customers? It, again, a huge opportunity. It is everything we do today has what we call a digital footprint to it. You know, I'm, I'm breathing right now. If I'm wearing one of these devices, it tells me. You know, the the amount of information that basically we can capture on a human level, and clearly in the enterprise, you know, kind of like okay, you know, I wake up and if I can go and take a coffee. Uh, at work, I can measure it right now, and I can put it in the database. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, so these digital footprints allow a tremendous new way of managing an enterprise. And what, if you think, you know, and we're going to create this new style of IT is going to create what we call a new style of business. And the new style of business is going to be very different. These new businesses are going to be very different from the current businesses today. Current businesses today, you know, you know, focus on scale focus on cost reduction, focus on EPS and what Wall Street tells them to do, and, and try to be monopolies so that they can have pricing power. Well, the, the new kind of business is very different. The new kind of business, they're going to focus on growth instead of cost reduction, but their value proposition, because they can measure everything, their value pro proposition is a customer experience. If they can get that customer experience second to none, 
and there are a lot of companies that actually can capture that customer experience. They don't need to be a monopoly. They just need to capture that management and experience, report it. and then everything else flows through it. I, you know, I'll give you a couple of examples. I'll give you Disney as an example. Okay? They don't have the monopoly of entertainment by far. They don't. But what they do is if you see the effort, and, and they measure everything, and they do it. They're a large customer, actually, with HP software. If you see what they do to capture that customer experience, uh, it's unbelievable. And what they're going to do now in this next generation experience, you know, with these magic bands, is, is literally know exactly where you are, when you are, what you're trying to do, and be there at your service so that you'll have an experience second to none. You know, you, know, you look at Starbucks, you know, I, I can actually do coffee at home in the morning. You know, I can go and do it personally, but I don't. I just, instead of you know, spending zero dollars to do it at home, I go and spend five bucks at Starbucks because I like that experience, yes, right. correct? No, and they don't have a monopoly on coffee. You know, but it's that customer experience that's going to define this new business that's their lock -in. model. That's yeah. Exactly. I think you know, exactly. the perfect storm, and, right. big data, mobile cloud, all hitting at once. The Internet of Things is right around the corner. Exactly. You have new way of doing business, instrumentation, big data. So big data will become just kind of like invisible in the future. It's going to be yes. just normal. Yeah. You see that happening yeah. as well, exactly right? Exactly right. Yep. Okay, George, well, we got to wrap it up. Great to have you on theCUBE. Well, thank uh, you. And uh, we certainly want you to come back and uh, and, and share your perspective next time in, in Barcelona or, or next year. Uh, this is theCUBE, this is George Kadiva, the EVP and General Manager of HP Software and the Executive Council of HP. He's on, he's on the, the core team changing this company and software will be a big part of it, but it's the new software, it's the new era, the modern era. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you.